Well, hello, friends. This is Pastor Mike Burns from Real Church in Long Island, New York. And it is Thursday, January the 20, I believe it's 27th today. Let's see what's, I get the days mixed up here. Uh, oh, goodness gracious. I know it's the 20, uh, the 25th, Thursday the 25th, 2018. I have so many things on my mind today. Uh, I have a, uh, a lunch appointment with some pastors from my ministerial organization today at one o'clock. And so I have to do my God's healing word show a little earlier than normal. Plus after that meeting, I have service tonight at 7.30 or Journey Through the Bible Experience here in Lindenhurst in my home that you are welcome to come to. That's right. You can come to my house if you live close enough here in Long Island to 19 Herbert Avenue in Lindenhurst, New York. And I'll see you tonight. We begin at 7.30 p.m. We'll be going live on Facebook at around 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And so if you can't make it here in person, you can watch tonight live as I bring forth the message on the true nature of God. Now, I only have a little bit of time today to get this teaching in. And we're talking about the 20 healing miracles of Jesus. Uh, we've been studying this, and it's been an incredible study. We've been talking about... Uh, about so far about seven of the miracles that Jesus has done in the Gospels and we found out in Hebrews 13 and 8 that he's the same yesterday today and forever in other words the miracles that Jesus did when he walked this earth over 2,000 years ago guess what he's still the same Lord Jesus Christ doing the same things for people who will trust in him and believe him today he hasn't changed one bit now we know that Jesus did much more than just 20 individual cases, but there are 20 individual cases recorded in the, in the Gospels. And there were some places where he healed everybody in the city or in the town. And there were multitudes that were healed, glory to God. And we're not told about individual cases. As a matter of fact, John shared in his Gospel that if all the books could be written about all that Jesus said and did, that the world couldn't even contain the book. So we know he did a lot more than just 20, praise God. Now, we're studying these miracles in the Gospels of Jesus for two purposes. Number one, we're looking at how Jesus ministered healing in each of these individual cases. And number two, how these individuals also received their healing. Now, we have to remember that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, by the Word of Christ. Many translations are bringing out the Word of Christ isn't Jesus' last name. It's the word that means his anointing, the anointed one, the anointed word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the anointed word of God in Romans 10 and 17. So we've looked so far at the healing of the leper. We saw that Peter's mother-in-law, what a great fever was healed by the touching of her hand. We saw that the paralytic was healed, who was carried by four men and let down through the roof where Jesus was. We saw the nobleman's son was it at the point of death and Jesus raised him up and, and healed him and said, your son liveth. And then we saw the man with the withered hand that he was completely healed, uh, paralyzed probably due to perhaps a stroke or some other kind of circulatory problem or injury. We don't know. The Bible doesn't reveal to us. We saw the centurion's highly prized servant was healed by the authority of faith. And then we saw yesterday that Jairus's daughter was raised from the dead. Now, Notice one thing, we're not trying to study necessarily the casting out of spirits unless it is related to physical healing. Now, uh, nor are we looking at the many of the other types of miracles that Jesus did, like walking on the water or, or multiplying the loaves and fishes. We're just looking at the miracles that re are related to physical healing. So let's look in Matthew, the ninth chapter, and let's look at Matthew's account of the healing of a woman with the issue of blood. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. Now, here's the thing. Matthew gives us a very brief description and an account of this story. There's obviously a lot more detail involved in this story. Now, if you believe that God created your body, why is it 
that we struggle to believe that God can repair our body. This woman, we're going to find out in Luke's gospel, there was a lot more to her condition. She'd had this condition quite a long period of time. And I don't care whatever it is. Do you believe that God can fix or heal anything? You say, well, I want to believe that. You're like the father of the boy who was demonized. He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Well, God wants to help your unbelief today by allowing you to hear the truth of his healing word that's available to you today. Not next month, next year, but right this very moment. Glory to God. You can be healed. The reason it is is because God is still in the healing and the miracle working business. It is easy for God to turn a tumor and cause it to vanish and dissolve. It's easy for God to heal a heart that's malfunctioning. It's easy for God to replace uh, diseased parts of your body like your kidneys or your liver. Uh, it doesn't matter. Or your hip bone. God can do these kinds of miracles and he's doing them today we're finding out. Praise God. Now let's look in Luke's gospel. This is again Luke, uh, the writer of the gospel of Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, the companion and compatriot of the apostle Paul who traveled with him, who also happened to be in his profession before he became a disciple of the Lord. He was a medical doctor. And Luke says in Luke 8, verse 43 through 48, he said, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, notice this, he reveals something that Matthew left out. She had this condition for 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could she be healed of any of them. She came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. Or well, literally, it stopped. Now, I'm going to read on here in a minute, but I want to just say something. When we hear about this issue of blood, you know, there are many kinds of blood issues. People can have leukemia. People can have, uh, you know, uh, high platelets in their blood. People can have many different diseases of their blood. There's uh, what they call uh, people that have, they can't stop bleeding when they do bleed. Uh, they, I forget the name, the medical term for that, but it's a, it's a, it's a very specific medical term. Uh, for that. Uh, anyway, there are different issues or diseases of the blood that a person might have. Well, just because this one says this woman had an issue of blood, specifically is speaking of the fact that she had a 12-year continuous bleeding from probably her female organs. Now, in other words, she had a 12-year period. But, uh, you know, certainly, you know, many of us might say, well, I don't have that particular issue. Well, whatever your issue, if it happens to be in any part with your blood, let me tell you something, my friend. The Bible says that the life of the flesh, in Leviticus 17, verse 11 and 17, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. It's important that your blood can be healed. Now, in Ezekiel 16 and 6, a great verse of scripture, it talks about that when I passed by you, God says, and I saw you polluted in your own blood. I said unto you, when I saw you polluted in your own blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, live. God is saying to you who have any kind of issue with your blood today that you are going to live and you need to start to believe that. Praise God. Now, in Luke, we read here, 8 and verse 45, Jesus said, after the woman touched him, who touched me? Now when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude is thronging thee and pressing thee, and you're asking who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody had touched me, for I perceived, notice this, that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Notice this, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Now, there is no scriptural evidence that reveals that Luke the physician stopped practicing medicine after he started following Jesus or Paul. Notice that the beloved physician Luke gives us a bit more details here in his account of the healing of this woman with the issue of blood. Number one, she'd been sick for 12 long years, okay? Number two, she spent all she had on doctors. Let me say something to you. Sickness can be a very expensive thing. Let me tell you, when I had the seven strokes in three parts of my brain, 
and I was in the hospital four different occasions. One time I had to go back by ambulance. All I can tell you is that when I was done with it all, and I'm, I'm, I still uh, have to see doctors, yet I'm, I'm healed, basically. Uh, my bills went upwards of $150,000. And that's modern medicine for you. Can you imagine that? Now, thank God, every bill has been supernaturally paid, praise God. So let me say to you that sickness is an expensive thing. It's a multi-billion, probably ne nearing trillion dollar industry. People are making money off of people being sick. Luke went on and said that she could not be healed by any of the physicians. Now, here's the thing. Some have taught that God is no longer doing miracles divinely, and they're wrong. But now, since they say medicine is so far advanced that God only works through doctors and medicine. Let me say something to you. If you pray for the sick and they do not recover, then they are no worse off than before you prayed for them. Come on, somebody. Is that true? This would apply to doctors and medicine, though, too. You see, if they treat someone with their medical knowledge and their uh, medicines and their surgeries and their therapies and the people still die, it's not an indication that they were doing something necessarily wrong. They were doing what they knew. See, doctors and medicine are not in opposition to God and his word. I would say that is absolutely the truth, and he's absolutely not against them. The issue is some people, and this is what I want to say, and I want you to hear this loud and clearly today, is that the issue with some is that they think medical science is a replacement for God and his healing power. I want to say that again. The issue with some people is not that God's against doctors or medicine, that some think that medical science is a replacement for God and his healing power. They are a natural help, medicine and doctors are, but they still have limitations. Now, there are many indications where God inspired people to do something natural along with the supernatural. Let me just give you three quick examples. Number one, when Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he told the family to give her something to eat, get some nutrition into her. In other words, raising her from the dead was a supernatural thing, but then she'd been dead for a while. Give her something to eat. She'd been sick prior to that. Give her some nutrition. Give her some food. The second thing we see where the Lord uh, used something natural along with the something supernatural is Isaiah the prophet told Hezekiah to take a poultice, all right, and put it on a part of his body, and he was healed. It was a medicinal type of a, a thing. A poultice was a type of of, of a of a, a natural type of a, uh, a source that he put on a sore that he had on his body, and he was divinely healed. God used that natural thing to bring physical healing to King Hezekiah's uh, disease part of his body. And then Paul told Timothy, we're told in the, New, in the New Testament, to no longer drink the water, but take a little wine for his stomach and for his often infirmities. In other words, the water was was making him sick. It was dirty water. It wasn't filtered water. It wasn't clean water. So Paul said, instead, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Now, he wasn't advocating drinking on benches and stuff like that, but he was saying, listen, your body needs to be hydrated, hydrated with wine instead of the water you've been drinking because it's the water that's been hurting your stomach and giving you many types of sickness. Now, I have to close here uh, today, and I'm going to pick up right here tomorrow, and I'm going to begin to talk to you about another king in the Old Testament by the name of Asa, and we're still talking about the healing of the woman with the issue of blood, and we'll pick up right here uh, where we left off today, but I want to ask you uh, to visit our website, realchurch.cc, and to download our free Real Church New York app. You can get that today. Now, I have a very important announcement to make that this Saturday we're not going to be in Freeport. Actually, for the next several Saturdays, because they have their consecration at PFC, Perfecting Faith Church, at 311 North Main Street, where we normally would meet on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Instead, we're going to meet Saturday at 10 a.m. here at my home at 19 Herbert Avenue in Lindenhurst. And I pray that some of you will make the effort to be here. We're going to be having a great praise and worship celebration. I'm going to be bringing a powerful word on the power of God's love to us. And you're not going to want to miss this on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock here in my home. Now, tonight we have a 
our journey through the Bible experience while I'm teaching at, uh, on the true nature of God. You do not want to miss that. That's going to be tonight at 7.30. So we have many ways you can receive the teaching of God's Word right here at Real Church. Visit realchurch.cc. Now, some things haven't yet been updated on the on our location, so I'm telling you, listen to me, and uh, and I'll try to get to it later, but I have a, such a busy day today, I, I won't have time to get to it all. I have to make the changes on the website and on the on the, uh, on the the app, the Real Church New York app. But you'll see there are directions on how to get to my home location at 19 Herbert Avenue in Lindenhurst tonight for a journey through the Bible experience at 7.30 and Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. We'll be having our service here in Lindenhurst as well. Now, thank you for being a partner with me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. You know, I've been asking for some of you to get behind this. Uh, I have some books I've just completed. I'm about a third of the way done on my fourth book right now. I have one book published. I have a, the study guide now ready to go to print. And I have the healing book ready to go to print. And I'm walk, working on another book for pastors and church members. A small little book that I believe is going to make a huge difference in churches across the country. And it's going to take a lot of money to get these things published. And if you'll help me by giving an offering today, I'll put you on a list to send you a copy of, of the newest uh, book, books that I'm doing right now, the study guide and the book on healing. I want to get that published. Now, I have to publish it first. It's, just, it's going to take several months. But if you'll help me, go to realchurch.cc, click on the icon in the top right that says online giving, fill out the form, and give safe and securely there. You can even choose where you want to give it to. There's a drop-down menu, and you could put it uh, specifically where you want your gift to go. You can also give through our Real Church New York app. There's a give tab. Tap on that, and then fill out the form, a short form, and you can give safe and securely there. And then you can also give by texting the words, Real Church LI to 77977. Text the words Real Church LI, all one word, to 77977. Fill out the form, and uh, when you get it, you'll get a response back with a link to the form. Te click on that link, fill out the form, and you can give safe and securely from our Real Church uh, from the, uh, LI from texting the words Real Church LI to 77977. Those three ways realchurch.cc, the website. Uh, the app, Real Church in New York app, available for free from iTunes App Store or the Google Play Store. And by texting, those three ways you could set your giving up to be a recurring gift or to be just a one-time gift. It's completely up to you. It's all right there in the instructions, and you'll have no problem setting it up for yourself. Glory to God. And you can change those settings anytime you want. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your support today. Glory be to God. And let me remind you again, we'll see you tonight at our Journey Through the Bible Experience here in Lindenhurst at 19 Herbert Avenue. And then on Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to be right here in Lindenhurst again at 10 a.m. because and for the next couple of Saturdays because of uh, PFC, where we normally meet in Freeport, is having a special time of consecration right now. So in the meantime, we'll be meeting on Thursdays and Saturdays here in my home at 19 Herbert Herbert Avenue. Come join me. Go over to God. Visit realchurch.cc for directions. We love you and God loves you. And I want to remind you today that Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you today.